Sunday morning and I'm kind of tired. Brian came in uh, Thursday after midnight, so it was basically, basically Friday. We had family time stuff that we did, and then he hung out with his friend from high school because it was his friend's birthday on the 7th. And then yesterday, the 8th, was, well, Brian and I did a lot of decluttering in between time. On the 7th, we went to the front room, the dining room. Uh, this room, should we go through this room? I don't know, we went through a lot of stuff, and down in the basement, he brought stuff up, all these X-Men figures and stuff, and he put them on the dining table under the nice light, and he took pictures of all of them, he's going to, he catalog them, and also he's going to try to sell them, because some of them are worth something. And then, uh, so, we retired from that. And he went out with his buddy that night, and then he got home about 2 in the morning, I think. I don't know, I was tired, I went to bed. And Saturday, yesterday, we went to my brother's funeral. My brother David had rented this handicap accessible van, so my mom could wheel her wheelchair up into it, and he could take her to the funeral home. His plan was family from 2 to 3, like mom, and, you know, us to get things organized or whatever. And then from three to six people would come. And uh Brian and I were still decluttering and doing stuff that morning and then I said, we gotta go. So we uh had our clothes on, funeral clothes on and we went over there. Well, we had a pretty good turnout. Um one of mom's friends showed up. Richard's high school buddy and another person from high school and uh, Brian had a bunch of people show up and then all my cousins that were in this area showed up and their kids the littlest one's eight Nathan and he was in his own little world you know and he was going around like this with his hand like he was flying an airplane and he'd come around, he'd come near me, and he'd pass by, you know. And I, in the, about the third time, I held my hand up and goes, You missed the airport, you gotta refuel. And he comes up and he goes, <laughs> Yeah. He's a little special kid. He's, he's a nice little boy. And I had a good time talking to his mommy, which is my cousin Jack's second wife. And, uh, all their kids are like 16 years old and up. There's pre other children, and I'm looking at them like, oh my god, I can't wait to see them. And then later on, all of us old fogies are sitting around with our phones. Well, what's your phone number? What's your address? I'll put it in here. No, you put it in here for me, and you do this. Do you know how to do that? I don't know how to do that. And all the the younger ones are standing around going, oh, God. You know, well, we didn't grow up with this technology. Anyone young out there, just, we didn't grow up with it. When you grow up and you're old, there'll be things that are beyond your comprehension and you'll have to learn them if you want to use them. Maybe you personalize pods to transport you someplace. And the younger crowd will go, I've been doing this for years. And you go, well, I didn't grow up with it. You'll see. Anyway, uh, it went well. Um, the casket, I'm, I took some, I don't know what happened to my vlog camera. I might have left it at mom's. I don't know, I didn't have it with me. So I, I took some pictures on my phone and some video. I know some people might say it's creepy. I'm going to try to figure a way to put it up so you can see. I Not right now because I'm tired and I have to read my book on the phone as to how to do it. But, um, yeah, they had uh, Soft Rock and Dust in the Wind by Kansas played. They had James Taylor playing and the Eagles and the kind of music he liked. The coffin was blue. He had a nice spray of flowers and a lot of people brought flowers. And I found a few pictures, not very many. I mean, I know given a great amount of time I could sort through that house and find more pictures. 
So I found his some of his wedding pictures and a couple before that when we were little kids. So I had that up on one board and another board I had some markers and I could write down what you know, a fond memory of Rick. And uh people did. And uh, my cousin Janice brought home made banana muffins. Oh, thank you, Janice. She's a good cook. Got that Swedish gene, the cooking gene. And we were talking about ancestry and all that stuff. We were, I was talking about doing that spit test and all that and what, how mine came up. And I was asking about the German heritage, the lineage, the family tree, and who has it and all that. And we we're trying to figure out that ourselves as to exactly when they came over to this country. We think it was mid to late 1800s. It wasn't 17 or 1400s or whatever someone else said. It wasn't that early. Most of our relatives, most of my family came over 1870 to this country. So I'm like third or fourth generation whatever country. So this country, the United States, for the most part, all when all the immigrants came over, wasn't that long ago, really, in, in time per, per, perspective. I don't know. No. Don't know what David's gonna be doing today. My mom held out pretty well, as long as she could. Her back's still hurting her. There's being plans being made to. Something along the lines of taking mom to the doctor, doctor telling her she needs to go to a nursing home for rehab, and then she's not going home. She really needs care all the time. If she's just falling apart, I had her lean forward to help put this compress behind her back. She weighs, her upper half weighs nothing. She really, she's just the weight of her bones, and that's it. It's her hands look like skeleton hands and it's just kind of creepy and freaky and she is she likes she has an addictive thing to her you know the pain pills are almost gone and she keeps wanting more and more and I had to hide them away from the one caregiver but they're all out of my little plastic bag and in that bottle now so what she has there is what she has there and when they're gone they're gone so I don't know how that's going to play out in the next Two or three days. David plans leaving in three days. He's going to drive Rick's truck back to Georgia. Basically, the plan is the house will be empty, and I will be. We will rent a giant metal container, and everything gets pitched in there. Every well, not everything. I mean, you know, there are some things that are valuable, and we'll try to sell that. But well, not valuable, valuable, but you know, like a dining set or a bedroom set or, you know, that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, times are not slacked yet. Brian and I, I have both my trash and recyclable things stuffed to the brim. And, uh, the front of the garage has tons of stuff that will be waiting for the next two or three weeks. And then last night when I was really tired and I'm going to bed, I'm laying there, Brian went to bed. And I hear a scritch, 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 choo, 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 scritch, scritch, scritch. I believe I have mice in the walls. For me not being here all the time and being at my mom's at night, critters have moved in. They said, oh, empty house, this is my place now. I said, cat, what are you doing? You're supposed to be, you know, telling these guys they can't come here. You know, get these mice out of here. And he's like, It freaks me out, and that's probably why the electricity doesn't work on three walls, because they probably chewed through the wiring, which is incredibly dangerous. Just like the damn squirrels chewed through Mom's Christmas light wiring, they went right up to the light itself. Not the wire, but right up to the light, and chewed it right off like it was an acorn. <laughs> Mom goes, can't you fix it? I, no. No, I can't. 
I'm waiting to see what David says. Brian's flight was delayed an hour. He has 45 minutes to take off. Otherwise, he'd be in the air right now. Poor kid. He could have had another hour of sleep. Some guy at the airport didn't know where things were, and he was driving in weird lanes, and I knew where the lane I was in, so I pulled ahead, and he honked at me, tapped an attitude like I was trying to be a jerk. No. If you don't know where you're going, don't cop an attitude, dude. So, it's freaking cold out there. First thing Brian said when he got here is, I'm going home. It is cold. It's way less than freezing. My hands are so dry, they're splitting open. And I know I've talked too long. Oh, yeah, way too long. But anyway, it was interesting. It's another step of life, and I'm not. I did get a little choked up now and again looking at Rick. He did a good job. He actually just looks like he's sleeping. His hands look a little flat. And my cousin Sandy, whose dad was a mortician, I'm sure when I send her the picture, she'll have some. She may have some um, criticism. You know, like, well, they could have done this or they could have done that. You know how it is. Anyway, uh, I have to see what's up with David and see if I can help him out. He's supposed to hang out with some of his old buddies from the band that he used to be in, Network. They're going to meet up for a drink or something. I learned about a brand new brew. David bought some. It's called Dragon's Milk. 14% alcohol. And it's got like a al real alcoholic twinge to it when you knock it back. It hits the back of your throat and goes, this is alcohol. It's not bad. I didn't have any. I just tasted it. Anyway. Better let you know. Got stuff to do. Try to find that camera. I mean, either that or I could try to use my phone like everyone else does, but I don't know how to do that. Gotta get the manual out, which is right here. <laughs> fun, fun! Four weeks reading here. Enough for a month. Anyway, I'll let you go. Upward and onward.